Hello, this is Jeff Loomis from Arch Enemy, and you are watching the Guitar Mania channel. Jeff, welcome to Vienna. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you um, too. Yeah, updating to your Facebook pictures. Mm. We already saw that the shows were nice. How was the show last night? The shows have been fantastic, you know. Um, every night is just packed with people. Uh, last night was 12,500 wow. people. So we've been really, really fortunate on sold this tour. Sold out already. Yeah, yeah, last night was sold out. Uh, a lot of these shows have been sold out on this tour. Um, I think one of the cool things about this tour is that it's a very diverse package. You know, every band is very different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think from a fan's point of view, they're seeing three bands that are, you know, immensely different from one another. So it makes, I think, it a little bit more exciting. Cool. You know? Yeah. So. First question which I want to ask from you, which we want to know from you, is um, what is actually your musical background? So, um, in the interview, you once told that uh, you started to play with drums, actually. Yes. And how was the change to get the guitar? So. Well, you know, growing up in a non-musical family, you know, my father did not play, you know, professionally or anything like that, but he always loved to play guitar. And he had a very, very big record collection. Okay. So I guess you could say that I was uh, immediately turned on to music just by listening to vinyls downstairs in the basement, you know. And... Um, my parents were always very supportive of me listening to music and playing music. So my dad suggested one day that, uh, you know, he get me a drum kit. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun, you know. So he bought me a three-piece Ludwig drum set and uh, started to play on it. And I really enjoyed it. It's just that I was incredibly shy as a kid. So he wanted me to take lessons and I didn't want to. Um, so... <laughs> So after I decided not to take lessons, he's like, well, maybe this isn't the right instrument for you. So I just kind of took a break from music for a while. And then I saw that my father had a guitar uh, kind of hidden away in a closet. And I just grabbed it one day and I quickly became uh, pretty good at it. You know what I mean? I just learned on my own because of listening to all the music that he had. I would pick these little riffs up by my, yeah. my own ear and was able to figure out parts and patterns and musical phrases all by, your all by ear, yeah. And then finally, I think he talked to me into taking some professional lessons, which were not very many, to be honest, maybe just like, you know, 10 or 20 or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, just learned a few uh, like modes and stuff like that, how modes are connected on the fretboard. And I basically took it from there and, and, and learned on my own. Um, I also read that uh, you auditioned with 16 years for Megadeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then mm -hmm. they said, okay, you're too young for it, actually, at that point. Mm -hmm. Later on, Dave Mustaine already asked you to join the band. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very weird how that whole thing worked out. I had a friend living in California uh, when I was 16 uh, that heard the news that Megadeth was looking for a guitar player at the time. And it was for the So Far, So Good, So What album. And uh, the guitarist in that band at the time was a guy by the name of Jeff Young. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend said, hey, why don't you make an audition tape and I, I will make sure I get it to their management. So I did that and they loved the tape. They, <laughs> they just didn't know that it was from a 16-year-old kid. I ended up flying out there and it was my first plane flight I've ever taken in my life, which was really weird. But um, <laughs> first time to make it. Yeah, was awesome. <laughs> I flew out there to, to Los Angeles, and uh, it's just I was standing in the line waiting for my turn to audition, and they called my name, and I think they were freaked out. I was like, "This is just a, a kid," you know. But they were really cool to me. They gave me my opportunity to uh, to uh, audition for the band. I played like four songs, I believe. Um, but yeah, they were completely honest, and they just said, "Hey, you know, that's." not going to work out you're too much too young yeah. and you can't uh, you can't be in the band but stick with it and one day you'll be a great guitar player so that's what they said it was pretty cool and you, yes you, you yeah. asked me about how uh, yeah. later on yeah I was doing my first solo album in 2008 uh, and he had called me up and asked me if I could uh, join or take the place of uh, Glenn Drover, Glenn Drover yeah. and uh, I was already immediately starting to record my first solo album in, in the studio and I had to decline. I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it now. You know? mm, okay. I've already got this going and uh, they ended up taking Chris Broderick. So okay. that's how Chris got the gig, yeah. Was it a good decision? So from now when you're thinking back? Well, you know, man, I've always been kind of like 
my own guy, you know, like my own <laughs> boss, you know, so uh, with Nevermore and stuff like that. And, you know, um, I, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I, I made the decisions that I made to do my own thing, my own solo career. And um, obviously, I'm very happy in Arch Enemy right now because I go way back with Michael. So it's like we've been friends for a long time. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad I made the decision that I made back then just mm -hmm. to do my own thing and to, to stick to my own. Yeah decisions yeah because so. you mentioned Arch Enemy now which you are now on tour uh, with mm -hmm. and so how did this cooperation came how did uh, you get in contact with them well I was doing some guitar clinics in China with my other um, thing with Keith Merrill called Conquering okay. Dystopia and uh, I had gotten uh, a, an email from Michael Amott asking if I would be interested in possibly joining Arch Enemy and I had got to thinking I'm like Hmm, <laughs> would that be a smart decision for me? And I've been a fan of Arch Enemy for a very long time, you know? I think they're a killer band. And I thought about it twice, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I want to do this, you know? So basically, uh, Arch Enemy came through Seattle, where I live, and played a show, and me and Michael had a meeting, and the rest is history, man. I was in the band like two weeks later wow. on a world tour in France, so starting in France. And uh, that's kind of how it happened. And I've now been in the band for a little over a year now. Yeah. Constantly so, touring since last year. So. And you're planning to stay or do yeah, that plan? Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm a permanent member of the band now and uh, I plan on writing with Mike too for the next album. So. Cool. Yeah, that's Very the plans nice. for now. So. Good to hear from you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned your uh, solo record, Planes of Oblivion. Mm -hmm. um, do you plan to do a new, maybe solo album? I do. Next time? Yes, yes. I'm going to start working on this immediately when this tour is over. It's my third and final solo effort for Century Media Records. And. Um, you know, I've got some musicians worked out for it that I'm not going to name yet, but um, I have a drummer in mind and I have a producer in mind, and it's going to be all instrumental with no vocals okay. and uh, hopefully some of the best work I've ever done yet. I'm going to really spend a lot of time to make sure it's extremely exciting and extremely energetic and extremely heavy. <laughs> so yeah. that's my that's my plan, and um, I'm hoping for you know a later fall, a uh, later spring release. Okay. Sometime in maybe March or April, something like that. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very much, yeah. yeah. Let us talk a bit about your style of writing music, and uh, especially also for um, for the solo albums, and mm -hmm. also now for the band, because you said you were uh, ready for the next record, mm -hmm. also with Arch Enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you do this? How do you? What's more or less your, your plan from the beginning of writing a song till the end? Well, I mean, everybody has their own way of, of doing that, you know. Um, for me personally, it's being in a very closed off environment. Like, I have to close myself off from the rest of the world and uh, turn my phones off and all that stuff, you know. Um, really just focusing on the music. And I almost seem to get into some sort of pattern where it's an everyday thing, where I'm writing every single day until the record is done. But um, for me, it starts off with me sitting at my studio in my, in my basement of my house and just coming up with riffs man you know mm -hmm. i'll riff out and if i think something sounds sounds good and musical i'll kind of document that into a pro tools file mm -hmm. and slowly you know i'll end up coming up with this variety of different styles of riffs and stuff like that and i'll start putting to putting them together like a piece of a puzzle you know mm -hmm. what i mean and i'll also program drums and get like the the idea of a drum I idea flowing in the pro tool session as well and before you know it, you know, it's kind of like building a house. You start off with a foundation, mm -hmm. and then you slowly build up by adding all the little things that you need to add to it to make a good song. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it, you yeah. know? It's, it's rather simple, really, if you think about it. Yeah, actually, how long yeah. does it take? I, yeah. I could write a song sometimes in a day. Other times a song will take me a week or even months. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's, um, it really depends on the energy that you have that day and what's coming out of you, or coming out of your soul, you know? Mm -hmm. But... Um, yeah, I think uh, it's really important to play from what's inside, you know, from your, what you hear, and try not to, to follow what others are doing. Try to be your own, your own uh, person, you know what I mean? Try to have your own signature of what you want, mm -hmm. you know? Make a name for yourself. It's so important. There's a lot of people out there that I think follow trends, you know, with a certain style of music that's perhaps out at the time, you know, oh, let's try to do that, you know. Try to do your own thing, man. Try to, mm -hmm. try to, try to be an innovator. Mm -hmm. yeah. But of course you need some inspiration more or less for something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For what, um, 
Inspiration. Where do you get inspiration from? Um, inspiration can come from anywhere. You know, inspiration can come from taking a walk. <laughs> it can come from hanging out with good friends. It can come from listening to a great piece of music. Um, for me, it comes from all of those things. You know, um, I think to be honest, a lot of my inspiration comes from where I live, in Seattle, okay. which is. Uh, Kind of like this weather out here in Vienna today. It's very doomy, very dark, and overcast, and rains a lot. So you definitely get this sense of this brooding atmosphere outside, you know. Um, and I think that definitely adds to the element of the the darkness of my music and the the minor sounds of it, you know. But um, yeah, I, I try to dig from it everywhere, you know, with people, friends, uh, books, uh, movies, soundtracks. Okay, you have. The, your your skills and everything, and you're especially known for your tapping techniques and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but do you practice while you are on tour, actually? And yes. or do you need practice? <laughs> yeah, I need to practice. You know, once you get older as a musician, obviously your fingers aren't as you know loose and nimble as they are when you're a younger okay. person. So before each show, I always try to at least warm up for an hour before I go mm -hmm. on, just to get the blood flowing. You know what I mean? Um, As far as practicing goes, yes, I'm still working on like new techniques all the time, and we're blessed in today's you know day and age of uh, technology with YouTube. You know, if I want to learn something new, for instance, like a hybrid thing or something like this, a hybrid picking thing, um, I'll, I'll go and learn something new on YouTube. Right now, I'm really into uh, uh, hybrid pickers. You know, like just using your middle finger with picking, and like uh, man, I'll type in you know, little lessons like that and work on that all day long, you know. So that's that's something I'm working on now. I'm, I guess I'm always trying to improve as far as guitar playing goes, you know. Um, I, I do have three very good things that I know how to do and I try to utilize them to the best of my knowledge, but I always try to get better too. And what do you more or less privately listen to at the moment? So. Wow, uh, differs, man. Well, what, are, what are your... Um, Okay, let's say, what are your top three <laughs> albums which you are now listening to and um, or which influenced you the most? Uh, now I'm listening to, like right now on the road, I'm listening to that band Sixth. Okay. S-I-K-T-H, is that how you say it? Sixth. Sixth. <laughs> Killer yeah. band, yeah. Um, love that band. Um, I'm also listening to um, lots of different soundtracks. Like, um, I love Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer is an amazing composer. And I find a lot of inspiration in the stuff that he writes. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to that all the time. Um, what else? Lots of classical music. I think that it's very important that you don't limit yourself to what you listen to. You know what I mean? It's like a lot of you know fans of, of mine and stuff are like, yeah, I just listen to metal. I'm like, well, you know, there's so much more stuff you can listen to to gain inspiration from. Listen to some classical music, listen to jazz, you know. I'm very into 70s music as well, like 70s progressive music, like the band Yes, stuff like that. Um, electric Light Orchestra, Queen, you know, bands like this I love. So it's coming from all different areas, man, and genres. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about your equipment, which you are mm -hmm. using. Uh, I already saw that in um, April this year, you brought out a signature um, overdrive yep. bell. Yep. Are you using these things also live or in the studio? In the studio, I basically use that pedal um, for tightness, tightening up rhythms. Um, live, I'm just using a Kem uh, the Kemper uh, rack, uh, the Kemper rack with the power amp built into it. And what we're doing there is we're going out of, of the back uh, into a 1412 cabinet. And I'm using that as a monitor reference cabinet for when I step back from the front monitors. And we're also going DI out of the Kemper as well to front of house, which makes it for a very consistent tone every single night. So it's absolutely awesome. Um, all my tones are coming from the Kemper right now. My main rhythm, my clean, my solo, and I also have another solo uh, channel that's set a little bit lower in volume. That's, for instance, when Elisa's singing and I'm playing a solo line. The, the level of that will be down just a little bit. Okay. Also, which another really cool thing about my setup is that um, I have MIDI markers uh, in the computer for all the changes that come, so I don't have to do any dancing on the floorboard at all. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Good, yeah, no, no changes with my feet. It's all automatically done for me, uh, which okay, is great. Everything is in time. Everything, <laughs> yeah, everything's in time and changes automatically for my presets. Yeah. 
So that's wonderful when you just want to completely focus on your instrument in a live situation. So um, that, I also have a new guitar coming out called the, the Cygnus JLX FR, which is really a radical, um, kind of a, like a star-shaped guitar from, um, how can I, it's kind of like an explorer shape. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a very metal looking guitar for, I think, that, that suits Arch Enemy really, really well. That's going to be coming out in uh, 2016, right after the NAMM show. Um, and I also have a new uh, series of uh, Jeff Loomis signature pickups coming out with Seymour Duncan. So two really, really big things coming out for me in 2016. So that's kind of like uh, what I'm using. I use my signature guitar, Kemper uh, rack, and um, Dunlop guitar picks and Ernie Ball guitar strings. So. Sounds really nice. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm all set, baby. <laughs> I'm all set. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, maybe as a last question, <clears throat> um, we have a wide uh, audience of young musicians. Mm -hmm. And do you have any advices for them or, or some tips for them if they want to become really like a professional musician? Yes, I mean, and Some yeah. advice? Yes, uh, I would say uh, I see so many kids, I call them bedroom guitar players, you know, they're always filming themselves in their bedrooms and they're never getting out and playing in front of an audience or getting in a band, you know, it's one thing to be an awesome musician and to put YouTube videos out there of yourself and recording yourself in your bedroom and all that stuff as a, as a solo player, but the most important thing is, and it's a night and day difference too, by the way, is playing in a band in a live situation in front of people. It's two totally different things. So my suggestion is, Get in a band as soon as you possibly can and start jamming with other people and start talking to them about how they play their instruments, you know? It's very important and, um, and be diverse with what you listen to as well on a musical level. Listen to all different styles of music. Cool. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot for this interview. Thank we you. appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks for having me, man. Have a good show tonight. <laughs> I look forward to it.